Tailgating before a Minnesota Viking football game is enjoyable when you include refreshing Ham's beer. The beer that helped to make the land of sky blue waters famous for more than 106 years. Now, Hams brings you the 1971 edition of the Minnesota Viking Highlights. 65 toss power tramp. Look for 65 toss power tramp. What does it look like? Hey, look for 65 toss power tramp. Let's see what it looks like. Gloucester, tell him 65 toss power tramp. Get in there for 65 toss power tramp. Let's block! Let's Come on, go. Let's, let's get seven points. points! Come on, let's go! 65 toss power tramp. It might pop wide open, rats. Quarterback Gary Quazzo had been at the Super Bowl, and he remembered. His entire team remembered. Thus for Minnesota, 1970's first game was really 69's last, a chance to put a bitter memory to rest. The memory died quickly. It fell under a relentless assault on the past. When it was over, Minnesota had dominated every facet of the game and the Kansas City Chiefs were crushed 27 to 10. The Vikings had gained their revenge and now they were ready for the last of their first 10 years. The defense set up win number two by blocking two New Orleans punts and holding the Saints ground game to a stingy 50 yards. Fred Cox kicked four field goals and number 55, Mike McGill's jog, with this futile punt attempt, gave the Vikings a 26-0 margin. Game number three was against the Green Bay Packers. The Viking defense was again tough to crack, limiting Packer runners to 57 yards. Gene Washington made one of the season's super catches of this Quazzo pass. But the shouting didn't last long because the Vikings lost. Dave Hampton took a fourth quarter kickoff one yard deep in his end zone and ran it back all the way, giving the Packers a 13-10 upset victory. Before the Vikings left for Chicago, Coach Bud Grant said, we are now in a very challenging segment of our schedule. The challenge was met head on. Clint Jones gained some of the toughest yards in football against the fierce, free-swinging Bear defense. Ed Obradovich thought he had something going when he picked up this football, but the ball was correctly ruled dead, and a little holding from his friends saved the day for angry Ed. Alan Page picked up a mid-air fumble and went 65 yards with it. The Purple Gang won 24-0. 
The Dallas Cowboys were the Vikings' next foe, and another sellout crowd saw some polite football early. But the Vikings returned to form when number 45, Ed Shirokman, got hot and turned the game into a rout. When Shirokman finished stampeding the Cowboys, Minnesota sat on the top side of a record 54-13 score. The following week brought the Rams to town for a Monday night game, and in bad weather, the Rams came out hitting. But the Vikings hit harder. Bill Brown put Minnesota out front with this first quarter catch, and the defense won the game late in the half. The Rams took three cracks at the Viking goal line and got nowhere. After two shots, the defense wanted to go home, but the officials insisted the Rams have another try. They failed and Minnesota went on to win 13-3. Then it was on to Detroit and the title-minded Lions. Gary Quazzo threw for 253 yards as the Vikings' offense put together a consistent attack. The Lions fought with more than hope, though, and held a 14-10 second quarter lead. But the defense settled down and Bobby Bryant took an interception in for a touchdown. Then Gene Washington hauled down a 41-yard pass from Quazzo and the Vikings had win number six, 30 to 17. At Washington, the defense stormed in on Sonny Jurgensen but it took four field goals from super kicker Fred Cox to win. Carl Kosoki's block punt sealed the skin's fate, 19 to 10. Next, another crucial game with the Lions. A loss would scramble the Vikings title plans and it looked as if the Lions would win. Bobby Williams ran a kickoff back 85 yards for a touchdown. Then the Lions forced a fumble by Gary Quazzo, and Mel Farr quickly gave them a 20 to 10 fourth quarter lead. But Larry Walton hit a wall. And Carl Kosoki demolished Greg Landry. And things began to happen. First, Ed Shirokman blew through and blocked a punt. Then a man named Jim Lindsay made his first catch of the season. It was the catch of a lifetime. With time running out, Clint Jones rounded left end, and the Vikings had a great victory. The Lions had nothing but disbelief. The Packer rematch followed in a sub-zero gale.
The Vikings' defense proved to be the margin, holding Green Bay to three points. Gary Quazzo hit Gene Washington with a 37-yard shot, and then Clint Jones won the game with sheer second effort. The Vikings now had win number nine. On to Shea Stadium and a chance to clinch the title. Joe Namath was sidelined and so was Gary Quazzo with a first quarter ankle injury. Bob Lee came in for Quazzo and directed his team efficiently. But the Jets were hot and the title would have to wait. New York won 20 to 10. Then came the Bears for a rematch. While this snowmobile got off the ground, neither team could in the early going. But Bob Lee soon bounced back and floated a pass to John Henderson that brought a third straight Central Division title to Minnesota. <music> Gary Quazzo, the cool strategist, stepped in at quarterback in 1970 and quickly filled Joe Cap's shoes. He moved up a rung on the quarterback's success ladder with every game. There were times when he might have looked like Cap, but he was his own man, and he won. Bob Lee, virtually a rookie, filled in for the injured Quazzo during the titled stretch and led his team like a veteran. A major part of the quarterback's success belongs to the offensive line. Number 53, center Mick Tinglehoff. Number 63, Jim Vallone. Right guard Milt Sunday, number 64. Captain Grady Alderman, number 67. And number 73, budding superstar Ron Yeary. With Ed White and Doug Davis filling in, the line threw up a wall around the quarterback. While Quazzo and his line gave direction to the offense, the receivers threw in the spice. Number 27, Bob Grimm, stopped at nothing to make a catch. He split time with John Henderson, number 80, who ended up the team's second leading pass receiver. The Vikings tight end is number 87, John Beasley. But the Vikings premier receiver is Gene Washington, number 84. The Viking receivers added the spice, and the Viking runners added the character. Hard, driving, not pretty, but effective. Number 41, Dave Osborne, sometimes cradles the ball like a boy with a new puppy. But he has the savvy of a pool hustler. Don't let him fool you. He's not the fanciest, and not the fastest. All he'll do is beat you. Dave Osborne doesn't like to be stopped.
Number 26, Clint Jones, spun and slashed his way to his best year as a pro. Fullback Bill Brown, number 30, plays the game the same way every year, with all-out effort. Not pretty, but effective. Number 32, Oscar Reed, is a young runner with a bright future. But he was slowed by injuries in 1970. Led by Captain Jim Lindsay, the Vikings specialty teams played with their usual abandon. Clint Jones returned kickoffs. So did Charlie West, number 40. Fred Cox was cut by the Vikings in 1962. It's a good thing he came back for another try. He was the Vikings' most valuable player in 1970, setting records almost every time he kicked. But it is defense that has made the Vikings what they are. Theirs allowed fewer points than any other in football in 1970, and that is what the people came to cheer for. They cheered for the best front four in the league. Number 70 is Captain Jim Marshall. Number 88, Alan Page was voted the top defensive player in the NFC in 1970. Page is not on his way to greatness. He is already there. His backup, Paul Dixon, may be the finest fifth man in the game. Number 77 is pro bowler Gary Larson, the strong man. All pro Carl Eller, number 81, is one of the best defensive ends in football. The people also came to cheer a marauding core of linebackers. Roy Winston, number 60 at 30, is the old man of the group. Middleman Lonnie Warwick, number 59, makes old men out of young runners, fast. So does number 58, Wally Hilgenberg. Number 49 is Dale Hackbart. The fans cheered a pass defense that made 28 interceptions and allowed just six touchdowns. By far the best in the NFL. Number 45 is Ed Shirockman. He led the team with seven interceptions. He was aided by Carl Kasulke, number 29, and by Bobby Bryant, number 20, and by Charlie West, number 40. Paul Krause, number 22, rounded out the backfield with six interceptions. This defense did two things better than anyone else, win and hit. <laughs> With a title clinched, the Vikings traveled to Boston to visit their old comrade, Joe Cap. The Purple Gang greeted him a little too warmly. They held his runners to 56 yards and intercepted three of his passes. On this play, Ed Shirockman gave the ball to Wally Hilgenberg, who took off on the icy field for a meeting with Joe Cap. <laughs> 
Wally saw Joe a little later. And Carl Kosoki ran into him too. Bob Lee, still subbing splendidly for Quazzo, came through with a red-hot 18 of 25 passes. This one to Henderson was the Vikings' first score. And this run by Lee was their last. The game ended with Minnesota on top 35-14 and with Joe Cap desperately trying to find someone willing to catch the ball. Even the referees had fun in Boston. Atlanta marked the end of the regular season. And although the Falcons pushed across the first touchdown with this punt return, the game was never in doubt. Fred Cox punched through three field goals to end up the league's leading scorer for the second straight year. And Gary Quazzo came winging back, hitting John Beasley for a touchdown. Dave Osborne, who touched off the Vikings scoring in their first game, also notched the last touchdown as Minnesota won 37-7 to finish the season with 12 wins, two losses. Next, the playoffs and the San Francisco 49ers. A win against the 49ers would put the Vikings on the road to their second straight league title. And that was what the football world expected. Okay, Minnesota wins a toss. we we seen here. Abruptly, the tide changed. The Viking attack faltered. They were defeated 17-14. Jim Marshall later said, we won together, now we lost together. Together, they have forged 10 years of football history. It began 10 years ago with a scrambling quarterback named Tarkenton running like a madman, trying to win. And fiery Norm Van Brocklin, coaching to win. The early Vikings were too eager though, too hungry. Jim Marshall made history by returning a fumble the wrong way. And Fran Tarkenton once scrambled for 18 seconds looking for a way to win. Always they were hitters. They could wear any uniform, any number, play in any stadium, any time, and you still knew they were the Vikings. They attacked people without thought for the odds. That's their unique character. But they didn't always win. Then the 1967 season and a new coach, Bud Grant. Joe Cap came along soon after and the two instilled a winner's pride into a team that was weary of losing. Cap took them to titles in 68 and 69. Now the team had added a new dimension. They were winners. And they won mainly by building the best defense in football, one that allowed less than nine points per game in 1970. A defense of 11 men with a unified purpose, to attack, to punish, to win. 
Over the past two seasons, the Vikings' record is the best in professional football. But they won't look back. What counts is now. And they look to their second 10 years with one thought in mind, to win. Theodore Ham Company was proud to bring you this exciting version of the Minnesota Viking highlights and invites you to include hams at your next tailgate party.